morning. It's Thursday, March 28th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Oh, What Joy, and our scripture is Psalm 32. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I groaned all day long. Day and night your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, let all the godly pray to you while there's still time, that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy, all you whose hearts are pure. This past Sunday's sermon was one that got my attention. I know that sounds odd in the sense that the preacher ought to know what he's going to say, and the sermon ought not to be something of a surprise to him. But frankly, sometimes what comes out of my mouth on Sunday morning can sound, to me, a little surprising. In the middle of preaching a sermon on stewardship, I experienced an overwhelming sense of joy. And it wasn't just about filling the bank account. I thought it was worth revisiting for a moment. The main points of this sermon on the topic of stewardship or giving were that we must make decisions about money and its use in these ways. Number one, whether we're going to be a control freak or trust God. And number two, if we're going to live life stingy or generously. In the middle of talking about these concepts, I was gripped by a sense of security and lifted in a way that can only be described as joy. For me, it was not a matter of giddy, happy, or superiority, just that sense of well-being that you're in the middle of the bullseye. I was experiencing that happy marriage of talking about something that's not a theory, but a lifetime principle that never gets old or shaky in its truth, that giving is godly. Now that's a joyful level that, if you'll forgive me, money can't buy. The first step in the journey is always the hardest, and that's never truer than opening a sermon about money and how it can control our lives, becoming our master rather than serve good purposes. It's hard because some people don't want you to talk about giving money away. And that's because it's difficult to give away that for which you worked. Believe me, I know that. As one who has spent most of his adult life serving smaller membership churches where the finances and the preacher's salaries were on the meager side, Yet still having to feed and clothe three kids and keep the wolves from the door? Well, you don't let the income become the outgo very easily. But on the plus side, when you're married to a person steeped in the joy of giving to others, and as a pastor you're in a position to know more about people's needs than the average bear, well, you see over and over just how God blesses and uses giving hearts. It becomes great joy. For you today, whether you qualify to buy a whole floor of Trump Tower or if you're homeless, there are ways that you can access that same joy of giving. It just requires paying a little attention to the opportunities God places in your way. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.